Hello students, this morning we will be talking about uh, concept of deviance and crime. I am Professor B. B. Pandey from National Law University of Delhi, Dwarka. We will introduce to you the concept of deviance and crime. The notion and definition of deviance and crime varies from time to time and from place to place. It varies according to the religious attitudes, customs and traditions and the forms of the government, their political, economic structure of the society. The criminal law plays a distinctive role in society and performs various functions like to deter people from doing acts that harm others in the society. The learning of object outcomes of this module, uh, they this makes the learners to understand the concept of deviance and crime it, and to make them know the key components of crime and deviance. It uh, makes the learners to know the various typologies and patterns of crime under various statutes in India and follow their recent trends. And it also makes them learn the various functions of deviance and criminalization and study their impact in building of the criminal justice system of the society. Now I will take you to greater definition and definitional component of deviance and crime. Deviance is defined is in, in terms of something, someone who deviates from the path set by the society or acts in, in a negative manner. Deviance is further defined by scholars as non-conformity to a given set of norms that are accepted by a significant number of people in a community or society. Third, deviance is culturally determined, but cultures change over time and vary from society to society. Deviance has been defined by scholars like Cohen, who said, behavior which violates institutionalized expectations, that is expectations which are shared and recognized as legitimate within a social system. Later, a cleanard uh, described deviant behavior as behavior in a disapproved direction from the norms sufficient in degree to exceed the tolerant, tolerance limit of the community. Similarly, Emile Durkheim is attributed to have given a structural functional perspective of deviance. According to him, deviance has many positive functions for a society. Deviance and crime are not synonymous. Concept of deviance is much broader than that of crime, it refers only to non-conformist conduct that breaks the law. All crime is deviant behavior but not all forms of deviance are criminal. Crime is the violation of formally enacted law is a type of deviance. Crime is defined as follows. Crime is an act of disobedience to any law forbidding or commanding it. Stephen defines crime. Crime means an act which is forbidden by law and revolting to the moral sentiment of the society. Blackstone defines crime as crime is an act committed or omitted in violation of public law forbidding or commanding it. Glenville Williams defines crime. crime. A crime is a legal wrong that can be followed by criminal proceedings which may result in punishment. The technical connotation of crime and their components may be understood as follows.
the essential attribute of what constitutes a crime includes the following three things. Crime in his act of commission or omission which is considered harmful by the state. The transaction, transgression of such harmful act is prevented by threat or sanction of or sanction or punishment administered by the state. The guilt of the accused is determined after accusation against him has been investigated in legal proceedings of a special kind in accordance with the provisions of the law. In case of crime, liability is owed to the state and the state supervises the processes leading to punishment. Civil wrong is an infringement of individual right while crime is a public wrong and is an invasion of public rights and duties which affects the whole society. In civil wrong, the wrongdoer compensates the injured party whereas in crime he is punished by the state. The essential elements of crime are the following three. Actus reus element which means a voluntary harmful action that results in evil consequences. Second, the mens rea element, guilty mind or part of wrongdoer on the part of the wrongdoer to indulge in a proscribed act or omission leading to harmful consequences to an individual or the society. The third element is concurrence element which is a fusion between the prohibited act and prescribed guilty mind. The three, the elements of crime can be understood very well by breaking them into a chart which is before you, actus reus, mens rea and concurrence. And actus reus itself has certain components act or omission on the part of the accused, then legally prohibited harm, the third, the casual link, causal link between the act and the consequence and all this has to be, the fourth component is voluntarily done. The mens rea element can be divided into two parts the guilty mind of crimes and strict liability crimes. There are certain crimes in which guilty mind component need not be shown to be present. Now in case of guilty mind crimes, the crimes can have one of the three, it may be an intentional crime, it may be a crime that requires knowledge or likelihood of harm and it can be a rash or negligent crime. All these are three forms of guilty mind which the law recognizes. Now I will give you little more explanations of the three elements. Actus reus means before any crime becomes punishable, there should be a manifestation of into a form of conduct. Actus reus has four components generally. The first component is there should be an act or omission on the part of the wrongdoer. Act or omission includes uh, both a positive act like striking someone with a stick or with a sword or with a shooting down someone with a revolver or omission. Omission also is treated as an act where there is a duty to act. Say for instance, the mother does not feed the infant. The prisoner starves the prison inmates to death. This is omission which is as, in, as involving uh, treated like an actus reus, first component of the actus reus. Then there should be a legally prohibited harm. The actus reus must relate to something which is legally prohibited in advance. The person or the activity should be such 
which is prescribed by law in advance. Now, harm and conduct are two different things. Harm means uh, the consequence of the conduct, and conduct is uh, what uh, is a physical act of the accused. Now, the third component of actus reus is uh, the component of uh, causal link between conduct and the harm. The harm and conduct should be linked causally. If it is the chain of causation is broken, it is uh, not the actus reus of uh, required by the crime. The fourth component is all these elements should be done voluntarily. Voluntarily means the accused must do it not in a, in a involuntary manner that he bumps against the other without knowing, like uh, crashing your mo motorbike against the other person without uh, any voluntary element because some push came from behind. Now explaining the second element of guilty mind or mensria may be more complicated because it requires understanding the state of mind of the accused. The state of mind of the accused may be measured in terms of the guilt of the mind or guilt component. Now, there are two categories of crimes. There are some crimes in which in most of the crimes, guilty mind is an essential element. But there may be some crimes which are known as statutory crime or strict liability crimes in which guilt mind, guilty mind element may be missing. This may be done expressly by the legislature or impliedly in cases where guilty mind component is uh, seen uh, to be absent by the judiciary. Now, among the guilty mind crimes, there can again be three categories of crimes. Uh, crimes which require intentional guilty mind. Intentional guilty mind, intention is the highest form of guilty mind, where both the cognitive and volitive element of crime, they concur to bring about a particular consequence. Similarly, there are certain crimes for which knowledge alone or awareness of the consequences or of the harm is enough. In such crime, there, there is no need of an intention and these crimes are specified in the penal code or in the statute. The third category of crimes which have become very controversial these days are uh, crimes of negligence. Under section 304A, whoever causes death by which is not a culpable homicide, but uh, causing death by non-culpable homicide kind of killing is uh, known as uh, 304A by rash or negligent act the cases of automobile accident, the cases of uh, uh, construction liability where the building falls on the head of somebody is uh, the person is punished under 304A. He recently in Upar tragedy case, the punishment was dished out under section 304A. In Salman Khan's case also, the punishment was to be given under 304A, but later the court converted it into a culpable homicide not amounting to murder, higher category of homicide, lower category of homicide. Now the third element of uh, criminal crime is equally important, which says that both actus reus and guilty mind must be present in a concurring relationship. They are present in a concurring relationship only when uh, the act is done with a particular guilty mind. For example, if somebody is trying to pick the pocket of somebody and uh, he tries to cut the shirt pocket and somebody gives him a push from behind and the scissors uh, pierce the heart of that other person. It is uh, not death is the result death is the consequence, but uh, the harm 
and guilty mind were not in concurring relationship. Therefore, this explains how each of the three elements are essential for a crime, but they are different from each other in terms of their explanation of criminality. Now, crime and offense and its variance. In the Indian Penal Code, uh, section 40 of the code defines an offense and denotes a thing made punishable by the code. According to this, crime is a generic term and offense relates to a specific prescribed conduct covered by each offense. CRPC 173 has used the term offense more specifically, just as section 2N of the code criminal procedure lays down, offense means an act or omission made punishable by any law for the time being in force and includes any act or in respect of which a complaint may be made under section 20 of the Cattle Trespass Act. CRPC classifies offenses into following categories, cognizable offense, non-cognizable offense, bailable offense, non-bailable offense, compoundable offense, non-compoundable offenses. Therefore, the scheme of law is that first you understand crime and then you understand offenses in terms of the provisions of the penal code and code of criminal procedure. Functions and of deviance and criminalization. Deviance and criminalization uh, has three important social functions. It is said to be a measure of solidarity and stability. This is what Durkheim in his division of labor in society, how stability is created and how the collective will is maintained in the face of individualism. Deviance has an important part to play in a well-ordered society. It brings people together, thereby building social cohesiveness and solidarity, which in turn decreases crime. Now, the second social function of deviance and crime is it is a measure of social defense. Individual who breaks the law needs to be controlled and punished for they threaten the security and stability of the society. And third is uh, a crime beyond certain level can create a breakdown of criminality, criminal community ties and rise in informal vigilante type protective responses. Now, the third social function of deviance and crime is it leads to social change. Durkheim argues that all social change begins with some form of deviance. Deviance can help a society to rethink its boundaries and more to a move towards the social change, hopefully for the greater benefit of the group. Criminal, criminals therefore perform a crucial service in helping the law to reflect the wishes of the population and legitimizing social change. We give you a short summary of what we have discussed so far. Uh, we have been able to establish a distinction between the concept of deviance and the concept of crime. Deviance is a much broader concept and crime is a narrower concept defined strictly in terms of the penal law of the land. Uh, conceptualization of deviance, deviance is conceptualized by different scholars in our discussion, by Cohen, by Kleinard, by Durkheim, and uh, they try to define deviance in terms of its uh, essential components. Deviance essentially means a behavior which is not in conformity with the norms set by the society by and large. And this is a deviation from the straight path set by the society. Therefore, a uh, concept of deviance is much broader essentially. 
conceptualization of crime on the contrary is uh, uh, a narrower concept in terms of strict legal definition given and that is why in the Indian Penal Code they have taken care of that by making a further clarification that out of crime they have taken out offence under section 40 of the Indian Penal Code. Offence says a offence is crime which is defined in terms of specific offence provisions of the Penal Code. Similarly, the Code of Criminal Procedure uh, divides offences into uh, two categories, cognizable offences and non-cognizable offences. Cognizable offences are those offences for which there can be arrest without warrant and non-cognizable offences are those offences for which there can be arrest only after magistrate has issued a warrant. Similarly, they have made a distinction between bailable offences and non-bailable offences. Bailable offences are uh, less serious offences and, and non-bailable offences are more serious offences in which bail is given very restrictedly. Now, therefore, uh, the law makes a clear distinction between a crime and a, an offence. Uh, elements of crime have been discussed after that, uh, actus reus, mens rea and concurrence and we have gone to explain each of these element in greater detail at the appropriate place. How each element works out in practice that has been explained in uh, earlier by us. What functions are performed by deviance and crime is uh, as uh, said but the three functions important functions of deviance and crime are that uh, they uh, legitimize, they lend a social solidarity against crime, they make the whole society organize against criminal and therefore crime performs a function. Then second, it uh, helps the society to draw a defense, defensive wall against the criminals, those who are deviants, those who indulge in deviants or crimes. And third, it has, it helps in uh, reform of the law. In that way, Durkheim said that crime performs a social change function. It is in that sense a functional concept and therefore if a society wants to change, there should be some amount of criminality in it. Now how this learning uh, deviance, crime enriches learning uh, about crime reality, therefore it uh, makes you understand that uh, crime is something which is treated as an evil, but this is a necessary evil which has some functional fallouts and which makes the society uh, stand for certain values and rule of law is enriched by the understanding about the concept of deviance and crime in the reality. Now, final conclusion to this uh, sector is three. The concept of devi deviance is much broader than that of crime, which refers only to non-conformist conduct that breaks a law. Crime is likely to become more prevalent as globalization facilities facilitates the rapid transformation of people, goods, transactions across the globe. Organized crime, especially in relation to information technology, money laundering and internet fraud are the new emerging forms of crime that the society seems to be grappling with. Thank you very much.